الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سورة آل عمران أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا لا تكونوا كالذين كفروا وقالوا لاخوانهم اذا ضربوا في الارض او كانوا غزلا لو كانوا عندنا ما ماتوا وما قتلوا ليجعل الله ذلك حسره في قلوبهم والله يحيي ويميت والله بما تعملون بصير ولئن قتلتم في سبيل الله او متتم لمغفره من الله ورحمه خير مما يجمعون وَلَئِنْ مُتُّمْ أَوْ قُتِلْتُمْ لَإِلَى اللَّهِ تُحْشَرُونَ فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَظًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَانْفَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ فَاعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ إِنْ يَنْصُرْكُمُ اللَّهُ فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ وَإِنْ يَخْذُلْكُمْ فَمَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَنْصُرُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ وعلى that this surah which is the sister surah surah al-baqarah these two surahs are very close to each other very similar to each other they resemble each other they may be called sisters they may be called zawjain now this surah is also divisible just like surah al-baqarah as i told you into two parts nearly equal the total number of ayat is 200 In the first part there are 101 ayat and 10 sections. In the second part there are 99 ayat but the same 10 sections. 20 sections divided into two parts. But the number of the ayat in the first is 101 and number of ayat in the second is 99. Now just like surah al-Baqarah the first part is again divisible into three portions nearly equal. One third of that is a general appeal to the muslims address to the muslims and was the the, the uh, mushrikeen the idol worshippers of arabia as well as to the people of the book it's a common appeal basic dawa of quran basic call of quran and there are you know gems of quranic wisdom which we have already you know studied i can't give more time to this repetition then the second part again just about one third of the first part this part is addressing you know to the other group of the people of the book in surah al-baqarah 10 sections were devoted to the address to bani israel ya bani israel askuru ni'mati allati anamtu alaykum wa awfu bi ahdi yufi bi ahdikum wa ya farhabun beginning of the fifth section and this address to the bani israel the former muslim ma continues for full 10 sections rather more because it is there in the 15th section that this goes to end ya bani israil askuru ni'mati allati anamtu alaykum wa anni faddaltukum 'alal alami so here we find that the other group from the people of the book that is the christians the nasara they are being addressed and here the question which have been discussed is the personality of jesus alayhi salatu wassalam he was really born without a father he was isa ibn maryam jesus son of mary he had no man father allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him by his word of kun that is why quran says kalimatum minhu he is a, a kalima a word from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah creates everything with this one command of kun idha arada shay'an fa inna ma yaqulu lahu kun fa yakun so actually to say that, that he is son of god that is you know shirk and you know a biggest crime in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this description has been given you know and then there is you know example in the in the person of john the baptist he was also born of very old parents 
the father, Hazrat Zakriya alayhi salatu was salam, he was very old. And the mother, she had been barren all the, all the life. And she never born any, any child. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because Zakriya prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that please give me, give me also a son like this, this girl, this Maryam, you know, salamun alayha. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him and to, uh, this, this old, you know, father and mother, they, they gave birth to a son and he is John the Baptist. So actually this all discussion is to rectify their belief about this trinity that Jesus belongs to, in some way, to deity. He is a part of deity. Either he is Allah himself, that is God God incarnate. You will find it in Surah An-Nisa. You know, and then either or he is one of the three, that is the trinity. So this main discussion is addressing the Christians. Then you know there was one third of the first half that is devoted primarily to the people of the book, both of them, the Yahud as well as the Sara. And Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam had been mentioned, just he was mentioned there in the third part of the first half of Surah Al-Baqarah. You know Kaaba has been mentioned here. In Nawala Bait in Wodya Lin Nasil and Dazi Bakata, Mubaraka Wahudal Lira Alami. The the construction of Kaaba was referred to in the third part of the first half of Suratul Bakara also. So these are the three subsections of the first part of Suratul Ali Imran. Then the second part, which addresses directly and mainly the Muslim Ummah, the Muslims, the Sahaba. But you know, among the Muslims there were Munafiqeen also now. So there were the true believers. Mu'mineen as sadiqeen but there were munafiqeen also, there were the hypocrites. So that is addressed to the Muslims and Muslims comprise of both. The mu'min, the true mu'mins and the munafiqeen. So this part actually is devoted to an address to the Muslim ummah. But here again we can have three subsections. In the first 20 ayat or so, you know, main dawah of Quran and secondly the, what's the function of the Muslim ummah. Why has this Ummah been raised? Just as we had in Surah Al-Baqarah. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ مَّتَمْ وَصَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاء عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا We have made you an Ummah, at the middle Ummah, the best Ummah. Why? Only that, so that our Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam becomes witness over you and you become witness over the whole of the mankind. So that was the basic uh, goal for which a basic purpose for which this Ummah has been created and founded. Same way we found, you know, in that, that part, you know, in the first 20 ayat, we have two ayat. Kuntum khayra ummati nukhrajat lil nas ta'amuruna bil ma'aruf wa tanhawna lil mulkar wa tu'minuna billah. You are the best Ummah. And you have been raised for the humanity at large. Other nations, they live for themselves. You have to live for the humanity at large, for their good, for their welfare. So that you call them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you call them to the right path, you forbid them from whatever is wrong and unjust, and you bid them whatever is just and right. So that is the main function for which you have been formed in Ummah. And if the whole Ummah doesn't do this job, what to do? You create an Ummah within Ummah. Those are the Muslims who wake up from their slumber and sleep and who have the understanding of their duty as Muslims, then they should join hands and become a smaller ummah. As you say, party within party, a state within state. So an ummah within ummah. The greater ummah is the whole Muslim people who believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa They are the greater Muslim ummah. Whosoever believes in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and Quran and Tawheed, they, they belong, whether they are practicing Muslims or not. But they are part and parcel of the Ummah. But you know this Ummah, if it is not discharging the duties for which it was being raised, then some people have to take upon themselves the responsibility of discharging that duty. Otherwise the whole Ummah will be doomed. The whole Ummah will be punished. Just as the former Muslim Ummah has been punished you know, so many times in history. So actually for that, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَعْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفَ يَنْهَوْنَ عَلِ الْمُلْكَرِ وَأُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Out of you there should be one Ummah. And that Ummah, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ They should do three jobs. Number one, 
calling people to whatever is good. And the biggest good on the surface of the earth is the word of Allah, this Quran. This is much fresher and much better than all the things that you amass and you gather in this world. So this to call in the people towards Quran. This is the first function of this party within party. The smaller ummah within the greater ummah of the Muslims. They should take upon themselves number one. Yadun al khair, dawa al khair. Calling the people to whatever is the most precious thing and the most precious thing is this Quran. Number two, ya amrullah bil ma'roof. You command and you know bid the humanity and then first of all they should, you have to command it to the Muslims. The greater Muslim ummah. This smaller Muslim ummah which must first of all reform the greater Muslim ummah. So that ya amrullah bil ma'roof, this amr bil ma'roof will be first of all to the Muslims themselves. You believe in such and such things and look to your practices what you are doing. You are saying what you are not practicing. Lema taqulu na mala tafalun. Kabura maktan in the lahi and taqulu mala tafalun. You shouldn't do it. This is haram. This is not permissible according to the Sharia. You leave it. And you know, then the ya murura bil marwa yan hawna in munkar. And to forbid them from whatever is unjust, whatever is munkar, whatever is wrong, whatever is haram. Wa ulaika humul muflehu. This is the most important. Only such people will gain the success. They will be successful in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not the greater Muslim ummah. The greater Muslim ummah will remain a Muslim here in this world. They will be accepted and acknowledged as Muslims, as legal Muslims. But you know the, the salvation of the hereafter, that will be given only to those people who are discharging those duties, which primarily was for, for, for the whole of the ummah, but because the whole of the Ummah is not discharging, they have taken upon themselves that duty. They are devoting their lives, their belongings, their money, their resources, their, uh, you know, um, intelligence, everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed, bestowed upon them for the sake of Amr bil Ma'roof, Rahim al-Mulkar and Dawa ilal khair Whosoever is doing so, only ulaika humul muflihul, falah, the success of the hereafter. That will only be given to these people who do this job and who take upon themselves. So these 20 ayah, two sections, the 11th and the 12th, they are very, very important. Then for 60 ayah, six sections that, that we have, you know, out of those we have uh, already uh, read the four ones. But uh, two will, we shall inshallah you know, translate today. These 60 ayat or six sections, they discuss the battle of Uhud, what happened during that battle. Different incidents that, that occurred and that took place. The mistake that the Muslims committed. The, 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 the act of indiscipline. Uh, Fifty archers who were placed at one place, you know. You have not to move from here. Come what may, you, you have to stay here. But you know, because after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the victory, they, they just left that place, 35 of them. The local commander insisted, don't move, but still they move. So this was an, an act of indiscipline. Although they might have, you know, rationalized their action, that the Prophet had said to us that if we are all killed and you see that our corpses and our, you know, dead bodies, they are being eaten by the birds, even then you don't, don't, don't move from here. But here the condition was not of defeat, but you know, the, the victory has come to the Muslims. So we can give some allowance to the Sahaba Kiram who committed that mistake that they were not disobeying Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because they had, you know, a rationalization that the instructions of the Prophet were in the case of the defeat. But here this is not the defeat, it's the victory. But still it was, you know, an, an indiscipline uh, and disobedience of the local commander. And the, the rule of the discipline is, as I told you, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man atani فَقَدْ أَتَعَ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ عَسَانِ فَقَدْ عَسَ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ أَتَعَ أَمِيرِي فَقَدْ أَتَعَ أَمِي وَمَنْ عَسَا أَمِيرِي فَقَدْ عَسَا أَمِي Whosoever obeys me, he obeys Allah. And whosoever disobeys me, he disobeys actually Allah, not me. I am his apostle. I am his messenger. I, am, I have been appointed by him. So my command is actually command from Allah. But in the same way, whosoever obeys the commander that I have put, the Amir, whom I have nominated, I have given the responsibility, he is actually obeying me, not that Amir. He has the authority only that because I have appointed him there. So they are obeying me, not the Amir. And if they don't disobey the Amir appointed by me, then they are disobeying me. 
So indirectly it was a disobedience to the Prophet also. But you know that turned the whole thing. The victory was turned into defeat temporarily. The Prophet himself was injured badly. Profuse bleeding was there from the you know, face of the Prophet The whole face became red and he for some time due to the loss of blood, you know, he, he became unconscious also. And there were the rumors that he has been killed, he has been martyred. So this, that was the panic and chaos. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pardoned them. And again, finally, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala somehow put in the, in the minds of the, the kuffar. Abu Sufyan was leading that army of the kuffar. Somehow it came to him that we should not now press because the, the Muslims have taken refuge high up in the mountain. And if we pursue them and, and they chase them even in the mountain because they are at the higher position, they can only kill us by you know, throwing the stones even. Anyhow, they just left. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now he discussed and we have read that. But you know, the incident that happened in the very beginning was that the Prophet came out of Medina with 1,000 men. But after reaching, you know, the uh, footholds of uh, of the uh, mountain, then you know when the army was visible, the the, the uh, army of the kuffar that was visible, then Abdullah ibn Ubay, the chief of the munafiqeen, he returned back with three hundred of his men. So now the number reduced to seven hundred, and they were pushed against, pushed against an army of three thousand. So now the ratio was nearly. Uh, approximately one to four but you know these people they said because you know our advice and our opinion was not followed and uh, the opinion of Abdullah ibn Abay was that we shouldn't go in the open field to confront the army of Quraysh we should defend the city of Medina from within the walls and incidentally the same was the opinion of the Prophet himself but the Prophet when he saw that the Muslims, you know, they, they are very emotional and they want to go out and, you know, to, to confront the kuffar. And when they said, many of them, that we want shahada, not victory. Victory is in the hands of Allah. Actually, what we are after is martyrdom. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he accepts ourselves and our lives for the cause of Allah, for the cause of his deen. So then the Prophet decided, okay, we shall go and confront the people, the army uh, of kuffar in the open. So now Abdullah ibn Ubay, he said, because our opinions are not respected, so we, we are not going to risk our lives. And he and 300 of the people that were his associates, so to say the munafiqeen, they, they returned. So now we have, as I told you, we have already translated four sections. Now two sections remain of this discussion. Then in the next two sections, again we shall have, you know, a division into two. In the first year, in, uh, that is the 19th section, there is a mention of again the Yahud and Munafiqeen and the Kuffar of Arab, the, the idol worshippers of Arabia. And then in the final, you know, there will be a summing up of the whole discussion of Surah uh, Al Imran. And again, we shall find there, you know, the, the most important gems of wisdom, Quranic wisdom. How Iman is synthesized? What is the synthesis of Iman? And that is actually a lesson of our selected course of study also. And I have, you know, given that lesson in detail. But today, inshallah, briefly we shall review. Now we begin with Ya yuhalladheena amanu la takunu kallazeena kafaru wa qalu la ikhwanihim idha dharabu fil lardi wa kanu ghuzdan la kanu indana ma matu wa ma qutilu O oh, you who believe or profess, profess to believe, don't be like those who said about those brothers. When those brothers, they are journeying in the, in the earth or they are on some battle or war, they say about them, Law kanu indana ma matu. Had they been with us, had they not, gone, had they not gone, gone out for journeying or had they not gone out for the, to the battlefield, they might not have been killed. Ya yuhalladheena amanu la takunu kar. You don't be like those people. Kalladheena kafaru. Who disbelieve actually. This is a disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because as the, we, see, we shall see in the later part of this ayah. Life and death is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the time has come. 
according to the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether you are in a fortress, you will die. And if the time has not come, if you are just, you know, uh, in the middle of the, 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 the battle, you will, you will return safe. No harm will come to you. So actually, whosoever says, had he been here, he would not have died. Had he been with us here, he would not have been killed. So actually, this shows that they don't believe that the life and death are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are not subject to these conditions, the worldly conditions, the external conditions, the apparent conditions. They are actually in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He decides. Ya amanu la takuru. You don't be like those. Kafaru, who have disbelieved and who, have, who don't have faith. They have shown that they don't have faith. They are actually the munafiqeen. They are in the background of this ayah also. لِإِخْوَانِهِمْ And they said about their those brothers, is zarabu filler, who were out in, on a journey in, the, in, the, in this earth. Or they went to some battlefield. Had they been with us, had they, been, had they remained with us, Mahamatu, they would not have died, or Baba Kotelu, nor they would have been killed or slain. And this is why, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to make it an anguish in their hearts, so that they should have sighs and regrets. This is a pain in the heart. Allah, when a moment believes in Allah, whatever has happened is by His permission, by His leave. So actually, I, live, I give my whole matter to, in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever has come from him, 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 I accept it. So actually, but these people, because they don't have that iman, that it becomes an anguish. And now they are, they have regrets. Now this is actually the essence of iman. While actually, the death and life is in the hands of Allah. It is Allah. Who gives life? And it is Allah Himself who causes death. Wallahu bima ta'amaluna basir. And whatsoever you are doing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing it.